Simangar pa jula jula. And then you repeat. Six six si baru manik kam di par. You know why we're doing this? Okay. Six six si baru manik kam di par joget solo mani gotam di mani mana ni simangar pa jula jula. Uh huh. Very drag brunch. Simang. Oh. Maybe that's why I like drag. Okay, recording, recording. Episode four, B Extra, a knitting podcast by Stephanos. Batik. B Extra, be proud, be brave. Not being arrogant, but knit what you want and love what you knit. Okay, um, welcome back, or welcome. Um, as I mentioned in the previous episode, I will focus uh, on batik on this episode, uh, but I will start with sharing um, some tips. Uh, and, and for this episode, the tip is going to be designing using Excel, especially or specifically designing um, color work chart using Excel. And at the same time, I will con- I will also work on my current whip. Um, so I will try to look up as much as possible, but uh, if I, you know, am looking down, that's because I'm working on my whip, uh, which I will explain a bit later. Okay, let's get into uh, the tip section. So, um, if you're wondering, or maybe you all already know that there are sites out there or app applications that can help you in designing your own knitting chart. So for example, Chartminder, um, where I can, I'll place an image here, where you can actually uh, create an account and use it to um, chart your, or make your own design. Uh, So I have been using it uh, initially to make my color work motifs. But what I want to focus here is how to use Excel. So let's say you have already Excel in your computer, uh, is how to use it to create your own color work um, chart. So I'll put down this uh, whip and I'll continue in a bit. But let's go to the uh, Excel. So here, we, when you open your Excel, you will have this default cell size. So as you can see here, uh, the, uh, you know, column A, B, C, all the way uh, up, uh, and then row one, two, three. Um, if you wanna check the size of these cells, you can go to format and then look at the row height and the column width. It usually gives you in pixel, the unit. If you wanna look at, uh, look um, the size in inch. What you do is you go to view and then go to page layout. If you look at page layout, you will see a ruler on top and on the side of your page. So this is for eight by ten and a half inch page. So on the top, it gives you the ruler up to eight inch inches, and then on the side, it gives you the ten and a half inch uh, inches. So when you do your gauge usually uh the pattern asks you to do gauge you know on a four by four inch uh, area so here what you want to do is you want to have the amount of cells that represent your stitch and row gauge so for four inches for example if you have a 19 stitches gauge and 27 row you want to have 19 cells on the x-axis 
or you know or you want to have 19 columns and you have you want to have 27 rows or 27 cells on the y axis so <clears throat> how do we do that so we need to do a little bit of math here so you for this example i'm i'm using 4 inches by 4 inches and i'm using a stitch gauge of 19 stitches and then row gauge of 27 rows for 4 inches so if for 4 inches i need to have 19 stitches for one stitch it will be 4 divided by 19 which is 0.21 inch and for one row oh, for one row uh, i need to have 0.148 or i can round it up to 0.15 inch per row so what you need to do then is you need to change that cell parameter so what you do is select all cells by selecting that uh, um, box in the corner once everything is grayed out what you want to do is you go back to home and you go to format and then you go to the uh, column width and the row height so in the column width you want to put the number uh, that you calculated for your stitch and then for the row height, you want to put the number that you calculated f from your row gauge. So here for the stitch, I need to put 0.21 inch for the column width. And for the row, I need to put 0.148 or I can round up to 0.15. So here I'm putting 0.21 inch per cell for the stitch. As soon as I put that, you see how the cell size changes. And for the row height, I put uh, 0.15. Now, after you do that, you want to make sure you actually have 19 columns and 27. So here I'm counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So I have 19 uh, stitches for 4, inch, four inches. And then uh, I should have 27 for uh, for the Y or for the row. It did not really give me exactly 27. I think it gives me 29. So here you, I can just manually resize the column height until I get exactly uh, my uh, row gauge, which is 27. So here, um, after I get exactly 27, There you go. I I then you know set uh, leave that as my cell parameters and start designing. So when you want to color the cell, you can do it manually. Uh, so if you want to do like color work uh, design, uh, you may want to color some cell a certain color. So here you can use the uh, paint icon so I'm going to show here for example I can use a uh, yellow color or choose another color but it's a little bit too cumbersome by doing that or manually what you can do is you can apply a formula by conditional formatting after you select all cells and go to color scales and then in color scales you click on more rules and um, under rules if you want to have like a two color you know color chart you s assign a number for each color so for example i assign number one for color orange and then uh, i assign number two for here i select the color purple once i do that every time i type for example number two the cell will change color into purple and if i type one the cell will change into for this example orange so here i'm selecting a certain uh size of a uh, certain amount of cells and i uh put uh, convert it into a purple color by typing two everywhere and now i start you know designing a motif um in that purple box where i type one uh, no, uh, number one to represent the orange or change the cell into orange and I come up with a random num uh, random motif. A good thing about Excel is if you let's say you want to have a repeating motif so if you already finish your re uh, your unit then you can control uh, select the whole unit control 
uh, control C to copy and control V to paste, and that will be your repeating unit. And you can update your uh, copying cell uh, by selecting a different region and then keep doing that, keep pasting it, and until you get a whole motif. And this now starts to look at, you know, like a color, um, a co color work uh, chart. Now, you can continue working on Excel to actually uh, chart a whole pattern. For example, I'm showing you here a pattern for my own uh, fingerless gloves. Uh, the motif here, I will cover it in another episode. Um, and also, there's another uh, example that I'm showing here, which is uh, my um, uh, bear cowl. A bear pride cowl that I cover in a previous episode. Uh, so actually, this is a whole pattern for that uh, bear pride cowl. And you can see I use Excel to convert that bear paw -er into a color work pattern. So that's the tips for uh, this episode. Hopefully, you know, it's useful uh, to you if you want to, uh, you know, use your Excel and if you want to, uh, you know, design your own color work, try it. And if you love Excel, you might, you know, you might love, you know, working uh, on, you know, color work, designing using this uh, technique method. Anyway, so now let's go into the main topic for this week or this episode which is batik. So batik is a traditional fabric. Um, originally, it is handmade, and it's originated in uh, the, the Java island of Indonesia. So originally, I was born and raised in Indonesia, although I'm not, I was not born in the Java island. Uh, I, I do enjoy this, um, this traditional uh, fabric uh, or culture. Um, act I was born in the island Sumatra and we have, uh, you know, a whole different uh, culture in terms of the, you know, the fabric, the garment, um, the songs and everything. But today I will focus on batik, which is from Java. So the general idea about uh, batik making um, specifically for the handmade one, it is using um, um, a reverse dyeing method. So what they do is they start with a blank uh, piece of cloth or fabric, for example, like a cotton fabric usually or uh, silk. And then they start using wax um, uh, to or candle wax to cover specific area and make motifs using the wax. And then they bring that fabric that is covered by the wax into, you know, like let's say a bucket of ink and the ink will stain the area that is not covered by the wax. Once they stain the area that is not covered by the wax, they bring it to a boiling water and the wax will dissolve and then you will see the motifs from this reverse dyeing method. Now, if they want to add uh, more uh, color on the fabric, they can repeat the process where they take, you know, another candle wax uh, and put that on, you know, a different area on the surface of the fabric and make different motifs, cover that up, and color the, uh, the the area that is not covered and, uh, you know, continue uh, on and on until you get the final, uh, you know, product. So um, there are so many types of uh, batik in Indonesia. Um, and depending on the region uh, of the Java Island where the batik is coming from, they will have a different name. And uh, a lot of time, batik, uh, nowadays, you know, the modern batik, they make uh, make batik into shirts, into, you know, jacket. But um, traditionally, the fabric is being used for, you know, like 
a traditional ceremony, for example, uh, traditional weddings of, or for the women, uh, the um, most of the time the traditional uh, garment to go to a wedding is having your batik cloth as your skirt and then having a kabaya, uh, which is like a lace silk uh, gown on the top. Um, and then, and, and then, yeah, um, and it will be really form fitting. So that's why I have this guy right here. So this is, uh, the bottom part here is actually, <laughs> uh, quilting that my mom made from pieces of batik fabrics, a leftover batik fabrics that she got from Indonesia. And then she made it into like a, so this is actually a scenery of, you know, like an ocean and a mountain and a sky and a, um, and a, and the sun. And <laughs> instead of putting it on a wall somewhere in my house, I just turn it or drape it and then turn it into like a skirt. It's just, you know, for fun, you know, on the, on this figure and just, also, this represent you know what you know people are wearing like whenever they go to um, uh, a wedding, like a traditional wedding. So they will have a batik uh, skirt, and then they will have like a kabaya. So here, this is I covered this from a previous episode or episode two about lace. I I knitted this lace. This is a shawl, but I'm just draping it like to look like a kabaya to give the idea, and then. You know, you uh, you they can have um, I don't know um, some sort of jewelry on top. I think I don't know. Do you need some more thing? Oh, and the the thing about the traditional batik for wedding, they don't have you know pockets. So you know, um, people will carry you know like a you know like a clutch. So, but I think, I think this needs a clutch of its own that maybe can be carried around the shoulder like that, right? Oh, that is beautiful. We just modernized it. Uh, anyway, <laughs> sidetracked. All right, so batik. So that's what batik is. Um, so there is one type of batik that I really like. It's called batik parang. Um, this is originated in middle part of Java. And historically, only... Um, so when Indonesia was still a kingdom, only the king or queens or the family of the king and queens can, can wear them. No one else can wear them. Uh, but nowadays, everyone can wear it. Um, uh, and uh, so the name Batik Parang, uh, it represents perseverance. So this is the motif. So you see how it goes. Uh, the motif is in an angle. It is, it's not really um, a vertical or horizontal. And this represents um, a like a rock structure on the beach that is interfacing with the wave coming from the ocean. And the rock will stand there even though the waves keep hitting its surface. And that's where the perseverance idea coming from. Um, so what I did is I converted that. Initially, I was using... Um, the chart minder uh, uh, initially i was using the chart minder site and here i'm showing you the um the chart using uh, the chart minder um even though it's my you know first few design i already put the correct a correct parameter for the cells using my gauge so i i i made um, a swatch and then from the swatch I calc uh, I counted the rows and the stitches for four inches four by four inches and then put that parameters on the website uh, for the chart minder so 
that way I can make sure whatever I knit is going to be l looking like whatever I draw on on the uh, on the app. So I should I should put it down. So here is the final object. So what do you think? First thing, um, you uh, this is using DK weight yarn, sunless yarn. I love it. It's really um uh, has that strong structure and it's really warm DK. Uh, and what I decided to do is I decided to put it on a yoke sweater and only in the yoke area. I did not repeat it all the way to the bottom. So the bottom part, the body part is just stuck in it. Now, um, a couple of things. First, I do see, first, yeah, my challenge at that time was how do I design a repeating unit that is not vertical into a yoke sweater? Because a lot of time, if you look at a yoke sweater design or pattern, the repeating unit is very horizontal or you know like i mean sorry uh you know purely vertical there are some patterns that are showing a, you know a diagonal one so that's that's my target at that time how do i repeat this repeating unit while getting the uh you know the the whole the total uh motif of batik parang so i figured it out i was able to do that repeating unit and let me put it on and i just love how it feels yeah mm -hmm. so it is what it is what i came up with now whenever i wear this i would get you know comment from people hey i like that animal print i'm like huh they it does look like an animal print and when i i keep looking at it i realized that you know when you knit a top down down yoke sweater you need to continue increasing until you hit a sleeve separation because you know when you knit top-down sweater you start with your neck opening with a small circumference and then you keep growing out by doing increases at, at a certain uh places what I, what that did is it's it's making that you know motif even more um or a, rather than staying like boxy like this it's a little bit round as mm -hmm. you can see here you know you see how the, the the final round vibe of it and also maybe because of the color of choice that i i use it just feels like animal print so at that time i did not do any iteration um but you know uh, if you if you watched my first episode, I now nowadays I actually like to do multiple iterations on the same idea or the same design, so that I get to see, you know, which type of you know sweater structure or um, type the design will work better. So my plan with this is to continue uh, updating the design. Uh, a bit different type of sweater or maybe even different placement of the motif and see how it will turn out so yeah um so that's that's where we are uh how many minutes is this almost yeah it's good uh, i i just love how this design is uh i don't know do I do I want to say I don't I don't want to use the word masculine but it's <sighs> sporty. It is kind of sporty because I like well I I play tennis and I like to um play tennis when 
it, you know, it's between summer and winter, like in the fall, when you, uh, you know, we in the East Coast can still, you know, play tennis outside. It's not when it's not snowy yet, but I like to put it around my shoulder, you know, um, you know, after I've finished playing tennis and I don't know, it, 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 it does uh, look sporty. Um, but at the same time, I can also wear it to, you know, uh, a little bit more formal also. Um, not, not formal, formal, but I don't know, work or something when it's really cold outside or even in the house because it's DK. So when it's really cold, uh, I love wearing it. And what else? Um, yeah. So that is Batik Parang. And um, the song, this is B Extra, a knitting podcast. Why stop at knitting? So when I finished making this sweater, I actually composed a Javanese style music or song. And I named it Batik Parang, which is the introduction song uh, that I placed in the beginning of this video. Uh, so in the, uh, like the Javanese music, traditional music, they use a lot of gamelan instrument, which is uh, a, a lot of gamelan from Java or middle part of Java. It is using a pentatonic scale. Uh, so, uh, so they're using a cylindro scale, a uh, scale cylindro, uh, which is the Javanese word. And uh, so pentatonic, you know, you divide an octave equally between five notes. And um, I think the type of pentatonic scale that I use, like a minor pentatonic. So even though it's five notes, it if you if if you look at the Oh my God, why is it becoming a music class? It becomes, you know, like not really equal, but it gives you that minor um, feeling. And, you know, um, in in Indonesia uh, I mean, or in Java, uh, you, you hear how that music is. It's really uh, s slow and maybe calming uh, and also it is known that pentatonic scale has that calming feeling so um and <laughs> if we continue talking about you know so uh, so i'm actually from sumatra i think i mentioned before <laughs> and sumatra and java it's totally you know we have totally different cultures like uh, you you you've heard before how the you know Javanese music is. It's really quiet. It's really calming. And then you know if you look at like uh, if you go to let's say a wedding ceremony and then there's like a Javanese dance. It's really like a like a um, soft gentle movement. And usually it's it's really um, horizontal movement. So there's a lot of this. A lot of this and then there's a lot of um like a body posture and then hand gesture mm -hmm. and something like this and then if you if you see you know one of those um you know head movement that's a lot of uh in javanese um uh, uh what do you call like a dance and i can share another tips uh when i was in so we had to choreograph dance movement in dance class, like traditional dance class throughout elementary school. And one of my friends who came from Java, she taught me how to do the head movement. Initially, I did not know how to do it. But then what she said, OK, put your hands like this and then try to move your shoulder right to left like this, right to left. But instead of moving your whole body, Try to center your head in the middle while moving your shoulder. So if I center my head and start continue moving my shoulder, you see that? Do you feel that muscle 
that is keeping your head in the middle and reverse that action. Keep your shoulder centered and move your head. Before you know it, you can do the movement. You can be all kind of extra. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Meanwhile, where I came from, oh, no, no, we're loud. We're from North Sumatra. We, oh, do I have, hmm, okay, another unplanned thing. Yes, I have props. Okay, so <laughs> instead of the movement, all this really, you know, gently, majestic way, like in Java, in Sumat, we call the Batak people. Batak people were loud. We we move horizontal, vertical, everywhere. So, um, for example, if we go to um, the wedding, like a traditional wedding, we'll dance. We we also dance, but the dance and you know the music is really loud. For example, there's this dance where you where you use this type of movement. And then you go up and down like this. For uh, what is that? Uh, what can I? Do? Oh yeah. Six six si benu mani kam di perjoget solo mani gotam di di mengenani si manggar pa jula jula si manggar pa jula jula. And then you repeat. Six six si benu mani kam di per. You know why we're doing this? Okay. Six six si benu mani kam di perjoget solo mani gotam di di mengenani si manggar pa jula jula. Uh huh. Very drag brunch. So now, oh. Maybe that's why I like drag. Very drag brunch. Six, six, seven, seven, eight, come. And then you need to be able to learn how to hold the previous one while continue uh, dancing. Six, six, seven, seven, eight, come. Dipper jog it. Solomon, go. Tam, tiri, mani, mani. Semangar pa, jula, jula. Semangar pa, jula, jula. Okay, keep going. Six, six, seven, seven, eight, come. Dipper jog it. Solomon, go. Mm hmm. What a wow really loud <laughs> that's it um no i love my culture i'm just i'm just making joke but no this is if if you want to ask what's the difference between sumatra culture like or like north sumatra where my parents are and java there at least there's that <laughs> you know that oh i make two dollars Barrage. Um, yeah. Batik. Mm -hmm. Where am I? Um, that's all I want to share for now on the objects that I have made before. And as I mentioned previously, I am currently working on my web. It's almost done. So this is the web that I have had since like three weeks ago or since the beginning of this, um, uh, what do you call it? Cause I started, uh, making this podcast like four weeks ago, right? Cause this is the fourth episode and I've been doing it month weekly. Um, it's coming along. Uh, I only have like eight more grams of the yarn this is cashmere from venice venice venezia si sono andato a venezia questa l'estate e ho comprato questa yeah i just came back from the italian class anyway um yeah, so uh, th this is a 50 grams skein, cashmere y a lace yarn. And what I decided to just make lace wrap. And, you know, uh, this is how much left it is. It's, it's not that, it's not that much. And I love this color. And I love this, how it is. And yeah, uh, it, it's not going to be so long or long, extra long. Yeah, it can also be, but it's just gonna be something like that. Oh, by the way, this is really easy to break and this is my first time 
having to put on Lifeline. Because, honey, I can break this easily. Oh, wow. Okay, so I will wear this with, like, a white shirt or white, I don't know, sweater. Because it's going to be striking between white and this red. Mm. Mm. That's all for now. Um, next week, I will be going to Rhinebeck. Because Rhinebeck is only two and a half hours away from where I live. I'm going with my friend Kathy and we'll go to Wool and Folk on Friday. And then I'll go to Rhinebeck on Saturday. Um, I think this project will be done before that. So I need to start something. So I have a couple of options to work on. I have this guy that I have had since last year, since last um, Rhinebeck. Uh, this is from upstate New York. It is a white barn farm. It's, let me, it is white barn farm and it's a really fun uh, little barn uh, by the road. So someone has a farm in upstate New York near um, Rhinebeck and there is like a little shack that they built right by this road and they put uh, their yarn coming from their, uh, you know, their farm and no one in there, you know, working, no one is in there working. So, you know, you just use honor system. You pick up whatever you want and then you look at, you know, the label and whatever, uh, you know, it, uh, the cost on the label, you Venmo the person, the Venmo information is there. So it's really cute. So I want to make socks from this because it's actually a sock, a three ply sock, yarn, 365 yards. Uh, for a skein, 90% Cormo Cross and 10% uh, nylon. And the one of the, the, this is Hot Toes and this is Lagoon Toes. So I think they're going to be amazing socks. So if I can find a sock pattern, I don't know. I, I do have some sock pattern that I've been meaning to make. Um... I don't know if I want to design my own. We'll see. But I do want to make it like sporty type of socks. So maybe on the on the um, on the top of the socks, you know, like th these three stripes, and then kind of just maybe um, easy ribs all the way down, or maybe ribs until the ankle, and then uh, I want to put a princess uh, sole, meaning I will do a reverse stocking net so that the one that is I'm feeling at the bottom of my feet is going to be this the surface uh the, the smooth surface of the uh, uh knit stitches while the pearl uh bump is going to be uh facing my shoes I think that's what I will do so make it sporty because it's a really sporty color no yeah pink and you know beautiful Oh, look at this coloring. Mm, yeah. So, so I think I will be making some recording from the Rhinebeck area. It's not going to be from my house next time, but I do plan to uh, uh, release another video next week. Um, I don't think there will be a theme next week because I will be, um, you know, in at Ryan back. Uh, so, but I will be able to show whatever I, w I'm w I will be wearing and I'll share what, um, you know, the history of whatever I'm wearing and whatever I'm going to adopt. Let's say that. So that's all for now. Always be extra, be proud, be brave, not to be arrogant, and until next time, bye, Batiste.